Okay, so let's take a look at how to set up and calibrate one of these older style vernier colorimeters. So the way a colorimeter works is on one side of the colorimeter we have different light sources. They are LEDs. This is an older model. It has three options, green, red, and blue at different wavelengths. The newer models have an extra option for blue at about 430 nanometers. But despite being older, uh, these colorimeters still work great and produce great data. So um, there are LEDs over here. So when you switch this on, uh, the LED corresponding to the color will shine very brightly. And one thing you want to do is go ahead and get this set up and the light turned on earlier uh, before you begin the experiment because it takes a little while for the LED to warm up so that it is uh, at its full brightness. You see a little spot for our uh, solution and we're going to be using something called a cavette. It's just a little plastic holder for our solution and I'll talk about that in just a minute. It can slide right down in there. And then on the other side there's something called a photodiode that is going to measure the light um, intensity um, that is reaching that uh, detector uh, through the solution. So you know according to Beer's Law that solutions that have a color absorb certain wavelengths of light. So we're going to choose the wavelength of light that uh, is going to be absorbed by whatever solution you're looking at. Uh, this technique will not work for solutions that are colorless. So the first thing we're going to do is take our uh, interface. Here we have a LabQuest Mini and I'm going to plug it into the computer. Okay. And it, you'll notice that these older color emitters have an older style uh, plug, which is not a big deal, but we're going to need an adapter. So an adapter looks like this. You'll see that one of these slides carefully together. It only goes one way, so be careful. And make sure that it's snugly uh, tight in there. And then we can plug uh, this now into channel one of our interface. And your interface may look different, but that's okay. Now, one disadvantage of these older style uh, sensors is that they're not automatically recognized by the computer. So, it's very easy to do though. In Logger Pro, or if you're using another device, uh, that's fine. You're going to look for um, set up sensors. And we're going to set up sensors for the interface, LabQuest Mini 1. And all I'm going to tell the computer is that in channel 1, I have plugged in a colorimeter. It's that simple. And right now it is giving a reading, a very small reading for transmittance. We'll talk about that in a minute. So if we go back to the picture of the colorimeter, right now it's off. So let's say I'm doing analysis with green light. I'm going to go ahead and switch it to green. And although you can't see it, that has turned on a green LED. And we're going to give that some time to warm up. In the meantime, I'll talk about the cavette. So if you look at the cavette, there's sides that have these little ridges, and then there's sides that are clear. And we want to make sure that the light is passing through the clear sides. So once again, the light source is over here, and this is the path that the light is going to take. So the ribbed sides are for um, holding the cavette. And in fact, we're going to use Kim wipes, which are just lint-free um, tissue, um, to make sure that we always wipe this cavette before we put it into the colorimeter because any sort of fingerprints or smudges will affect the absorbance of the light and give us uh, results that are off. Um, one thing you also want to check uh, is make sure there's not too many scratches on the cavette. If there are, that can also affect the reading. One thing you want to do is take a marker and put a tiny dot on one side of the cavette at the top, and we're always going to put the cavette in the same way. So in this case, I put the dot on this side, and I'm always going to put it in on the right, uh, that is a control uh, so that we don't uh, introduce other errors into the experiment. Okay, anytime we use a colorimeter, we have to calibrate it first. Um, what that means is we have to show the colorimeter uh, what 100% light looks like, meaning what 100% of the light going through the solution um, corresponds to that voltage on that thing called a photodiode. Now, this confuses a lot of students. Um, because sometimes they want to calibrate it when it's completely empty. Sometimes they want to calibrate it when there's an empty cavette in there. But the correct way to do it is to calibrate before you start the experiment, and you need to use the solvent that you're using during the experiment. So, for example, 
if your solution that you're going to be testing is aqueous, meaning dissolved in water, you have to use water for your blank. If you were doing a biology experiment, and maybe your solution were acetone that something is dissolved in, you would have to use pure acetone to make the blank. So it's not always water. Um, so I'm going to take a bottle of deionized water, and I'm going to fill this cuvette three quarters of the way full. It is essential that you fill it at least halfway. If you fill it exactly halfway, that's where the light is going through, and it's going to actually be shining through the air, and you'll get bad results. Don't overfill it, though. So three quarters of the way is your target there. And if you are worried about being clumsy, uh, most cadets have lids that you can put on them to make sure that they don't spill when you put it in. So this um, light is fully warmed up now. Once again, I'm going to take my Kim wipe and wipe off the sides of this. Put it in. Make sure to slide it down. It's okay if it sticks a little bit. And we're, of course, going to close this lid. And on the bottom of the lid, there's this black felt that prevents any light from getting in the crevices. So we just slide it in there. So I'm going to switch back to Logger Pro now. And whether you're using uh, Logger Pro or a different interface, now's the time to calibrate it. So the newer ones have a button that says calibrate, and it'll do it in just a couple of seconds. But for this one, it's a little older. We have to do it ourselves. It's no big deal. I'm going to go to experiment, then calibrate, colorimeter. So basically, we need to tell this machine what 100% transmittance looks like. That is full brightness going through that water. And we also need to tell the machine what complete darkness looks like. So let's do the full brightness first. I'm going to click Calibrate Now, and it's super simple. Right now, just to double check, my light is on. So this light is over here. It's shining at full brightness, and the detector is detecting that light. So we want to tell this colorimeter, uh, the software, that that corresponds to 100% of the light being transmitted through that solution. None of it is being blocked by anything. So I'm going to type in 100 into my percent transmittance. I'm going to click Keep. Now let me tell you how students uh, mess up the next one really badly. Notice how 100% transmittance corresponds to a certain voltage that that thing called a photodiode is reading. So I'm going to switch it off really quickly and watch what happens to this voltage. The voltage goes to basically zero, which is what we expect. The machine is off. When I turn it back on to green, the voltage goes up to basically what it was before. So we want complete darkness in the machine for the second point. We're going to call that 0% transmittance. But here's what you don't want to do. If you turn it completely off, then that voltage drops to zero. The detector's not even on. So this is giving us a wrong reading. So we need to use this 0% transmittance switch instead. How does the machine make it completely dark in there while keeping the detector on? And it's really simple. This setting just turns off the lights. So right now there is no light inside of the machine, but the detector is still running. And when I switch over uh, to Logger Pro, we'll see that there's a voltage. It's still registering a voltage, it's just meaning, wow, this voltage corresponds to really dark. So once again, when I switch to green, that was the 100% transmittance. When I switch it off, that's what we don't want. And when I switch it to 0% transmittance, that is what we want for our second measurement. So always make sure this number stabilizes before you hit keep. Now we're done. And at this point, you do not want to disconnect your colorimeter at any time during the experiment. And you'll want to make sure to do all of your trials for the experiment after during the same sitting, uh, setting uh, because uh, that calibration is only good for right now. So one way to double check our calibration, it's my switch is on 0% transmittance now. If I turn my switch to 100% transmittance, we should see that Logger Pro goes to basically 100. And when I switch it back to 0% transmittance, we should see that Logger Pro goes to basically 0, which is what we want. So now, um, on your colorimeter, you would be able to open up your sample holder. At this point, we can leave, uh, we're always going to leave the light on. We don't need to use that 0% transmittance anymore. We're going to take out our cavette, 
And then when you're ready to run samples, whether it's one sample and you're measuring the change in absorbance over time, or whether you're using different trials, we're always going to use the same cavet, and we're always going to line up that dot to the same place uh, so that we don't make a mistake. Finally, let's say it gets time to actually use the solution. We need to make sure that all of the water gets out. So if I just dump this out and then put my new solution in, it's actually going to be more dilute than it should be because there was a little bit of water in there. So the way that you take care of this is you would dump this out and then say I'm pouring in my new solution, which would obviously have a color. I'm going to pour in a little bit of it, dump that out, pour in a little bit more of the solution, dump it out, and on the third time, I'm going to fill it up with my solution three quarters of the way. That ensures that whatever you're about to test has the correct concentration and it's not too dilute because of something that was left before or it's not too concentrated because of a, um, a, a sample that you ran just before. So hopefully this has been helpful on how to calibrate the colorimeter and use one of these old style colorimeters.